when you're building a three-way speaker, or I suppose a two-way loudspeaker, you have the same thing. You have to have a crossover at some point. So here you can see we've got the, the three drivers, you know, the bits that actually move up and down, the little voice call in each of them, and a magnet, and electricity, and wow, these things move and make sound. But that's just the speakers. The crossover is technically, I suppose, this bit here. So if we have a look here, this is the, the woofer or the largest speaker. So we have capacitors, they will see, but they are just parallel lines. This is R for resistor. They're often represented by that. And these are for ground, which I suppose in our case is either what I often think of as the negative, if, you know, versus the positive. So we can have a look here. So two of these are actually connected the other way around to what you'd expect. So like positive to, you know, a little square, but here positive going to not the square, but the other side and same with this one, you know, the, the tweeters basically, or the tweeter, the mid. These are the inductors, uh, that's 3.9 milli henry, uh, and that's the resistance of it, which I think is the secondary consideration. Uh, yeah, anyway, so more resistors, more capacitors, you know, more inductors, and so you go on so for the mid, and wow, something, quite a bit of stuff going on here for the uh, tweeter. In fact, so much so that I'm probably going to have to make multiple crossover boards to fit them in the speaker where I want them to go. What do we need to do though? Is you take something like this, like massive capacitor, C5 on this one, it's 47 UF, I believe that's microfarad. That's quite a large capacitor, especially if you're going to be using something like polyester or polypropylene. What do we do if we can't buy a capacitor of 47 UF, then we need to make one. And what can we do? We can add some smaller ones together by wiring them up in parallel and we'll get to that. We also need to look at what's available to us because if I can't buy 47, then I can't buy 47, even if I want to. So what I did is I basically uh, found out what I could get from various suppliers. And these are the same values here. And then I figured out what I could break them down into. So for example, to get to 15, I literally could not buy 15. Can you believe that? Living in Africa, I suppose. You know, it's kind of hard to import things and our post office is in a mess and you can only import three things before you have to register with the government and blah, 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 you know, load of nonsense really. To get to 15, I thought, well, 10 plus 4.7 plus 0 0.33 is pretty much 15, bang on. Uh, the nice thing about having 0 0.33 is if the two capacitors, the 10 and the 4.7, end up being over that when I, when I measure them, and I'm just using a ESR, is it ESR? A component tester then I can just omit that one. So if it was 10 and 5 or 10.4 and 4.7, then I'd drop that one and then I'd be at 15.1. So that's pretty cool. A little bit of uh, flexibility. Broke down all these values into what I can get hold of and that's what we've got. But now we have another problem because we have a whole pile of capacitors. Oh, look, it's getting interesting suddenly. And that's not a 47 microfarad. So what I need to do is take these and put them in parallel. So these are 22s, so 2 times 22, 44. Well, we're getting closer. And then we add another 2, now we're at 46. And then we're like, hmm, hang on. If we add a, you know, one of these, then we should be good, right? 2.2 plus 0, 0 0.8, is 830 nanofarads, which is 0 0.8 microfarads. So together, that's three, and together, that's 44. So there we go, 47. So let's wire these up. And you can do it temporarily at first, grab my pliers. Ready, so I think, um, because it's gonna to have to go on a board or somewhere, it's gonna to have to be stable. So the way I thought about it is, if I have these two, and then I can cable tie them together onto a, a board, that'll form a base, and then I could put these two on top like that, maybe put a, a zip tie around all of them through two holes, not my countertop, on a board. Anyway, so to do that, I'll straighten these out. Uh, I've been testing them, that's why they're all uh, wonky. Apparently my depth perception is going a bit here. I think I'm focusing on the background while looking at the camera to make sure I'm getting the, the action. 
on the screen. Okay. Just these end bits that I've uh, tweaked that I really need those for. It is also useful for getting rid of some of these sharp bends that I've put in in the first place. There we go. It's silly because I need to do that. That. Right, hang on, get rid of that one there. Straightening these wires mostly cosmetic, but it also frees up a little bit of play in them for us to be able to use. So my goal is to have that, that. Okay, so may as well twist these two together first. Now, effectively, we've got one 47 microfarad capacitor now. So when this is done, I'll solder this together. And now we've got two. So great. I only have to do that for, um, well, eh, one, two, three times two is six, six more of these. <laughs> Let's get busy. You may have noticed that some of these are in bold. Um, so, and some of them are just single numbers. So if I need a 22 UF capacitor, you know, that's the value from the diagram. Let's check that's uh, C4, where's C4 hiding? There's C4, 22 UF. If you can find something that is 22 UF, then just use that. Don't make these things up if you don't have to, is the way I'm thinking about it. Bang, there we go. That's one of them done. Pretty simple, really. The other thing you may notice is that the tested values don't always match it's plus plus minus ten percent so i really shouldn't complain too much because ten percent would mean this would be 20 and then it would still be accurate in fact it'd be slightly less than 20 because 2.2 could be 19.8 and still be within 10 percent. So the fact that it's 20.58 or 20.6 basically means it's pretty accurate when i could get something the other thing is cost optimization right so this is expensive i managed to get this shipped down to me or courier down for me from the other side of the country so that's this one here, so it's in bold. Uh, it's a tweeter, it's in series. That's where I'm putting my money is on the tweeter and things that are in series. So I tried uh, harder. So for example, I've also got a 4.7 as well. Uh, it is, it even measures 4.74, which is good. And another clarity cap. So I spent quite a bit of money relatively on, on these bolded ones. Um, basically because they're uh, this one was just a small one but again I, I could get a 0 0.8 although interesting they actually measure uh, 0 0.806 and rather than 0 0.82 so they're not the most accurate despite being fairly expensive a, yeah I'm not sure if that's Sonnen might be Sonnen brand cool um, there is actually some sense in building these things I've been some reading the polyester and the polypropylene for example they behave differently as they get warmer one of them will actually gain in terms of capacitance and the other one will lose so if you put them in parallel as the one's warming up and becoming a bigger value the other one's getting a smaller value and that kind of counteracts so there could be some merit to doing it that way although i do wonder how much i'm going to hear any difference to be frank this could be an electrolytic with a single bypass cap, like two of these, plus uh, you know, 40 UF, would have need to be bipolar though. Otherwise the uh, electrolytic would go bang. So let's do another one. Pretend to me, Ooh, look at that, 983 and 982. So there's a nicely uh, paired up the values there. These are more like 978 and even 972 and 975. So we'll because I've got two speakers, I'm going to try and get them balanced as much as possible. Two of those. Then we need some 4.7s. I also need a 0 0.33. Let's see what we've got there. Let's put them together. So now let's think about this one. Um, how can we do this nicely? We could maybe do it something like that. And you could even do something like that, I suppose. That might even work better. 
wanted to make that easier to wrap. Yeah, let's do it like that. I just take the longer lead and wrap around the uh, inner one to let it do most of the the winding work. You do want to try to get the other one to to twist as well, as I've noticed they come loose For, before you solve them. I mean, okay, so that can go like that, and then that'll be. Mm, I've made it a little bit too tight. So I imagine I was just able to buy a 15 UF. I would not have had to do both of those. Okay, four done. Four to go. That's the best way is to try and get set up more like a production line and just go for it. Cool, so these are the capacitors for well, speaker one, speaker two, or left or right, whatever you want to categorize them as.